So, uh, to begin, welcome to the Amherst Historical Commission public meeting on Monday, October 26, 2020. Based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020, this meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. My name is Jane Wald, and as chair of the Amherst Historical Commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.33 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as normal. Uh, as a remote meeting, we'll take a roll call of commissioners in attendance. So as you hear your name called, unmute yourself, answer affirmatively, and then please place yourselves back on mute. Patricia Off. Present. Robin Fordham. Present. Janet Marquardt. I'm here, but you know, uh, Jane Scheffler isn't, so who is taking meetings? Minutes, I mean, we, you said minutes are being taken, but none of us are. Uh, they're being uh, being recorded from which we can develop the minutes. Yep. Okay, because if you want, I can take, but if Ben, you're gonna take them off of that even better. Um, yeah, I'm taking notes and uh, we'll have the recording as okay. well. So. Great. Well, Jane Scheffler is not present. Petty Startup? Present. And Jane Wald, I'm present. Please use the raise hand function to ask a question or make a comment. I'll see your ha raised hand and call upon you to speak. After speaking, remember to remute yourself. Opportunity for public comment will be provided during a general public comment period. Please be aware commissioners need not respond to comments during this general public comment period. If guests wish to make a comment during that time, when called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes and at the discretion of the commission chair. So from there, we'll turn to our agenda, which first uh, calls for announcements, if there are any announcements. Do we know of any? So it seems like we probably do not. Nothing from me. Okay, thank you. Um, then next, um, we have three CPA proposals uh, to consider, Community Preservation Act proposals. Um, and let's see. Um, we'll start with a North Amherst Library wall repair. Great. Um, Jane, do you want to just give a brief overview of kind of like we did last time for what we're expecting of the yes, uh, yes, presenters? Okay. Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, for presenters, um, members of the Historical Commission have uh, had access to your proposals and we've already uh, already read uh, the material you submitted. So uh, in this uh, in this part of the agenda, we would like to um, hear anything else you would like to add. Uh, you may summarize your project, add details that may not have been in the proposal, and then uh, commissioners may have questions for you. So thank you for, uh, for being present to um, talk about your proposal. The responsibility of the Historical Commission uh, at this point will be to um, discuss among itself the, the various proposals that have been submitted under the historic preservation category uh, and to assemble a recommendation to the Community Preservation Act Committee uh, uh, that details the, the Historical Commission's views on the various proposals um, to help them eventually with their final decisions uh, in uh, putting together a re their own recommendation to the town council. So we will we'll have uh, probably 10 minutes or so for to um, talk to you about your proposal, ask questions. Uh, so we'll begin again, we'll begin with the North Amherst Library wall repair. Is Guilford Mooring present? Great, yeah, so I've, uh, Guilford, I've promoted you to a panelist. Um, and if you can, you can unmute yourself and uh, 
Great. Thanks, Guilford. Hi, how are you doing today? I think the only thing I'll add is, is that the proposal doesn't really talk about which wall we're doing. Um, it just kind of talks about wall repair. This is actually the front wall of the, of the library in the basement that we're talking about. So it's the wall underneath the main entrance to the library at this time. And I'm willing to take questions. Okay. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions for the Gilford Morning? Well, I hate to do this, but I have the same question that somebody else had last time, which is, um, why does this not fall within town maintenance budget? You, you can always argue that most CPA projects might fall under town maintenance budget budgets. Um, this wall is actually to the point where it's beyond a maintenance activity. This would be more of a major renovation or restoration at this point. Um, the maintenance activity was to prop up the wall and shore it up the way they did. Um, we can, it can be left that way, but I don't think the actual overall project will benefit from leaving it that way. And it actually might cause more harm than good. Okay, thanks. I'm, we're just, we're having trouble a little bit more this year than we have in the past because so many proposals have come from the town and and I guess in the past it always seemed clear that it was either an organization that wasn't the town or it was a building that didn't belong to the town. Now with a lot of town things I think we're just finding it's a little fuzzy for us so that's why I'm asking the question. Yeah but, but you could ask that same question to the people coming to you from outside the town. Why didn't you do enough maintenance to preserve it or why is it? Well, no, I don't, I'm not casting aspersions on how you've kept the building. I'm just at looking at where the source of funds is. That's all. I understand, but that's I always in Hadley. I always found it hard to understand how, how you could say no to a CPA request for historic preservation. Yes, it is maintenance or I understand exactly where you're coming from. Okay. Can, can you, t there is a um, design process, I guess, underway for the North Amherst Library. Can you tell us how this project would intersect with that larger one? Uh, it, this may be a question about urgency. <clears throat> well, it actually, um, this actually was brought up by the design process for the addition. The addition is a building which is roughly about the same size as the first floor of the library, a little bigger with a connection to the existing library, which will provide handicap accessibility and it'll also provide um, um, bathrooms, ADA compliant bathrooms. Um, and when we were looking at hooking into the building and how to connect the two pieces together, that's when we started realizing there were some discrepancies and how the, there's just some discrepancies, which is mainly in this picture here you can see, if someone cut, cut the main beam to the first floor to put stairs in, they took the back door, which was the access to the basement out and decided to put stairs in from inside. And that's what's caused this little, well, the building shifted a little bit as well as the walls rolling in. And to correct this, you need to take out the stairs uh, and put this beam back in, which is in the project now. Um, but then the wall is not in, in the project. So that's, that's why we added the wall as a CPA request is trying to get that fixed as well as when we're doing the beam as project. Mm -hmm. I have to say the photo of the, the beam sliced open for the stairs is pretty startling. <laughs> when, when you actually, if you actually go inside the library and you walk through the foyer and you go into the main room and turn and walk along the wall between the wall and the circulation desk, you can actually feel the, the depression in the floor. It's about an inch to two inches of a depression where, right, where the beam, where it's dipped down. It's kind of, it is very interesting and strange. Okay, are there? Um, yes, Betty, please. Um, can I, it's a very random question and I, I it's partly um, ignorance, um, but I love this building um, and this part of, um, our town and uh, I'm always curious about the relationship of the building you know to the area behind it and I wondered if anybody has ever talked about moving it 
Um, I only ask that, and maybe it's a completely irrelevant question at this point in terms of this project, but of course, if it was possible to move the library, reorientate it or create some kind of different way of getting there and inside and out again and parking and all those things that are quite complicated on that very sort of constrained site, um, then obviously what we're considering right now in terms of the staircase and the wall would be um, kind of putting our money, you know, to, to something that might be not part of a, a more large, a larger project. Um, <laughs> so, so forgive me for, for um, if I'm asking something that's completely off the wall. It's not off the wall. Um, people did talk about moving the building and turning the building. And um, it was kind of decided to keep the, the orientation as it is, because it's looking directly down towards what is, although it's a little, the building's a little low, it is facing directly south down the North Amherst Common area. And it kind of, it kind of heads up that common. And when we realign the intersection of Sunderland Road and Montague Road, there will actually be more of a green space to the west of the library. And there'll be more space behind the library to move the parking and put that and kind of clean it up a little better. And it'll look a little, it'll look a little more like it fits in with the rest of the common at that point, because there'll be grass much more, it won't be surrounded by pavement. It'll be have grass on one side and it'll have pavement on the other side. So it'll look a little more like it was on the, on the common. So this is the, um, is this the Montague Road or some, this is the Montague Road side? That's Montague Road side. <laughs> so what we're seeing is <clears throat> pavement here is going to be green space and the intersection between Sunderland and Montague is going to be further north, is that? Yes, yeah. it's basically going to go through the gas station. Mm -hmm. Sort of creating an island. The library will be on an island. Is that... Well, it's kind of on an island now, but when you do get rid of the Sunderland Road, you're going to link the library's green space with the recreational field on the west side and with the old old school, that'll be all linked as three parcels together. Okay. Thank you. I, <laughs> I, I'm not really familiar with the sort of larger context of what the plan is for this really nice building. So. All right, are there... Um, other questions or comments from commissioners? Um, I guess I have a question in terms of how the town shows this particular aspect of the project to apply for CPA funds for, I mean, I guess it's pretty clear that it's building stabilization, so that makes sense. It's the one side that we're not touching um, actually, it's one of three sides we're not ch touching with the addition in the back. So okay. that was kind of one of the things that guided us this direction. Okay. I think this is Nate. <clears throat> you know, a few years ago, the library, the North Amherst Library had some money to do some work. And one of it was the foundation um, doing a little bit of work. But afterward, um, or maybe when that was under, um, you know, as that was being done, <clears throat> like Guilford said, it became apparent that the problem was it was more than just fixing some bricks, which we thought originally was maybe, you know, working on the bricks. It's actually that the structure of the, you know, the weight of the structure now is, is causing damage. So it, it can't, you know, you can't, you know, just fixing the brick foundation or the foundation doesn't help. You actually have to then put in a new structural support. Um, so I think, you know, you know, eventually this has to be dealt with, you know, it's not, I mean, I think, at Guilford, so I think the timing is now just because, you know, it was looked at a few years ago and now it's become more apparent that the problem can't be ignored. Mm 
And it makes sense to tie it in with the larger project. Yes, the, when we do the larger project, almost everything in the basement comes out and it opens up the whole basement for work and gives you a chance to do all of this without causing a lot of disruption. Right. It just amazes me that somebody would cut that header beam and then put an extra two by four and think that took care of it on either side. I mean, really, <laughs> it's astonishing. Uh, we find lots of that stuff around town in, in, old, in the older buildings. There's some stuff in the DPW barn that you would never expect someone to do and they did it and it's like, wow, it's still standing. Hmm. Well, thanks for the proposal and for coming to talk with us about it. It, uh, it does help to, to you know, <clears throat> be able to ha uh, have some questions answered that uh, we may have thought about before or may only think about tonight when we're talking about it. So um, is there anything you'd like to add, Guilford? Uh, I think the only thing we haven't said is that the estimate is developed by the architects who are doing the project. It's not something we threw together. It was put together by Kuhn Riddle and their design team. Um, and their structural, um, their structural people actually came up with this and have worked very closely with putting it together. So that's where the estimate came from. Okay, that's helpful. Very helpful. Who, who would do the work? Would it be uh, town DPW folks or? Would it be contract? Oh, no, 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 okay. no DPW. Oh. <laughs> um, it's going to be put with a bigger project for the addition and added together as one big project and, and led as one project. Okay. Okay. Well, um, thanks very much. We'll, uh, we will certainly include this in our overall review of proposals to send up to the Community Preservation Act Committee. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I may stay and listen to the, the North North Common one too, but I'll just sit oh, back yeah, and be quiet. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Gil. Okay. okay. Um, next on our agenda is the Jones Library Special Collections Facility. Great. So, yep, we have the project team is here. I'm going to um, promote Sharon to panelists and. Um, Yep, and Kent, looks like. And if there's anyone else from that team, if they can raise their hand just so I can know who to add in here. Oh, perfect, okay. All right, so as mentioned earlier, we've <laughs> uh, 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 read the proposal and um, may have some questions for you and uh, but want to first offer you an opportunity to add anything or emphasize anything that you would like to. Sure. Hi, everybody. So I'm Sharon, uh, Sharon Sherry, and the director of the Jones Library. Uh, and so I'm actually here just to answer questions if I can, but it's going to be Kent Ferber uh, that's going to give you a, a little bit of uh, side information. Oh, Kent, sorry, you're on, you're on mute right now, if you could unmute yourself. Is uh, Cindy Harbison on also? Do you see her? Yes, she's I'm here. Because she, she should be available for answering questions also. Um, thank you very much for your review of our application. Um, I should introduce myself. I've been, a, I'm not a trustee of the library, but I, I have been on the um, uh, feasibility and design committee since 2014, if you can believe it. I've been very much involved and I'm also the co-chair of the development committee of the Friends, which has undertaken the lion's share of the fundraising for this project. So I have been the coordinator of this application. Um, the application speaks for itself. As you note, uh, it's more lengthy than, <laughs> than you might, might want to read. Uh, but I would just uh, emphasize a couple of things. This is basically the same application that you approved last year for a grant of a million dollars recommended. Um, there's a couple of changes and a couple of context changes that I just want to highlight. 
This is uh, fundamentally, though, for the preservation of one of the most important historic assets of the town, namely the library special collections. Um, the description of the special collections is, is an exhibit A, which you probably read, that indicates, describes not only their international importance, but their value to us um, as the town exists today. It's a, uh, it's a, a marker of the town's past as a guide toward its future, and it's used all the time for that purpose. Um, one additional uh, change to this revised proposal is that it's the change, the evolution of the schematics of this larger grant, of which this is a part, have now put most of the special collections um, facility in the original 1928 building. So this is a um, adaptation, a rehabilitation of that building as an additional historic preservation goal. Um, a second new feature of this uh, revised application is that we now have very specific and detailed um, estimates for the cost of just this facility alone. Uh, what you have attached to the application applies only to this facility, no other part of the larger project. And the amount uh, estimated is, is a, sub substantially larger than the $1 million uh, recommendation you made last year. Um, two new items of context give this project an urgency it might not have had before. Uh, number one, you probably read in the paper and we've outlined in the application, the damage to some of the collection from the HVA system uh, which which um, can't be repaired. Uh, the trustees, as a result, have now advanced, tr they're trying to advance the larger project to the town council, asking them formally for a decision on this next by next April, because the trustees are now feeling quite urgency, urgently the need to do something with this facility. If they can't pursue the larger project, They've got to be on to whatever it is they can do. Um, but that, uh, in a, in, even if the town council doesn't take up the project by April, next June or July, the Mass Board of Library Commissioners is going to offer the uh, Jones Library a, its award of $13.8 million, and the trustees will be required to make a decision within six months after that. So at the very latest, a decision has to be made by the end of 2021. And that, again, your, your recommendation and the CPA's recommendation will play a very major role in um, that larger project. Um, and I should just finally remind you that, remind all of us that this um, historic preservation project is part of this larger expansion project. And as part of that, it, it's an unusual opportunity to achieve a much larger historic preservation objective with the help of lots of other funding sources, the NBLC, private donors, other grantors. So basically this CPA grant is gonna achieve a historic preservation uh, goal that it could not achieve on its own. And for those reasons, we think this is really a good idea and should be recommended by the CPA committee and by you. So we're all happy to answer any questions and thank you very much for the opportunity to present this. Can I, um, can I ask how the special collection is being protected now after the fiasco with the HVAC system? Cindy should answer that. Uh, we've covered the stacks in tarps so that they are protected from the water. Um, this is an unfortunate measure that we have to do. It's really hard to access the stacks under the tarps, um, but they um, are protected from the leak. Um, so that's what we're doing. <laughs> but, they're, but they're not temperature controlled anymore, apparently. It, they are still in the, um, they have as much temperature control as they, as they did before, which was sort of variable um, because it, it's an open space without a door. Um, but it, the, it's still 
the problem with the leaking can't be fixed, but the, the system itself is still limping along. And that, of course, doesn't include all the collections that are in other parts of the building that aren't um, secure or temperature climate controlled. Correct. So my other part of my question, I guess, is if we move forward with the renovations and um, I'm not sure what we're calling it to the library, the reconstruction, the renovations. Is, is there a, a space, I just heard that it's still going to be in the original building, but has that been, has the idea of preserving the special collection been considered in the new construction? Uh, I'm not clear what your question is. Yes, the, I think the, one of the exhibits is the proposed uh, schematic floor plan for on the ground floor of the newly renovated expanded building and that includes a large enough space for special collections that secure climate controlled plus reading room plus exhibit space that's much larger than what uh, we have now and will allow in fact an, an expansion of the special collections going into the future. In the new new space, not in the. I'm I'm hearing two different things. I'm hearing that it's going to be in the original building, that it's going to be in the new space. Most of, um, maybe the thing to do is can you get can you call up um, the exhibit? What is that? C D I think it is. Here we go. Yeah, I was going to ask. Are there visuals in this? Here we go. Yeah. Thank you. And that's no, exhibit B. Keep going. One, B. No, that's it's that's it's what, what, colored one. This is what we presently have on the ground floor, exhibit C, and then exhibit D is what is proposed at the moment. And so uh, the CPA committee asked us to make this clear. The left is north, and the entrance of the library is on the left side. The yellow space is identified is all of the newly, uh, the, the successive um, special collection space. Sorry, here we okay, go. Okay, yeah, you okay, good for you. Okay, so reading it upright, reading upright, the very bottom is the of the yellow is special collection storage. Going up is more special collection storage. Then going above that is a workroom. And going above that is the reading room with a couple of offices for staff. And then over to the left side across the hall is a yellow don't denoted special collections uh, exhibit area. Does that answer your question? And this is in the original building or in the new space? That's in the new space. It's not new, it's a re, it's a re, it's the new, it's the successor addition. Uh, we're gonna take down the addition that's there now and, and create a, another addition there. And that would also be added onto the back of the original building. The original building is the L-shaped, um, Let's see, there are large lines. Yeah, it's good for you. Thank you very much. That's the original building. It goes all the way back up to that hall, that blue hall. There you go. Now you go across. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's all the original building. Okay. So all of the special collections uh, space, except for the exhibit area, will be in the original building in this particular um, iteration of the schematics. We don't expect this to change very much. When asked about this, the chairman of the Board of Trustees told the CPA committee the chances of this being moved somewhere else is equivalent to the chances of Joe Biden not winning Massachusetts. <laughs> Could happen, but very unlikely at this point. Just to clarify too, the you know, they're calling this the ground level, but this, I mean, this is where the lower level is now. So yeah. the, the auditorium in blue with all the seats, that's, you know, where the Woodbury room is located now. So it's on Thank that you. same level. And so this is where the stacks are. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. where the, where the uh, nonfiction stacks are now. If you go, the, the previous exhibit E shows the present configuration. There you go. So, so the, purple, the purple areas are the adult nonfiction, the blue in the upper left corner is the Woodbury room, 
and basically the, what's in the tan is going to be repurposed for special collections and then ESL in the back. So if, it, 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 forgive me, my, I just need to have some clarity for myself. If, if this is the plan for reconstruction of the library, how would the CPA funds be used specifically to protect the special collection? If this is all being reconstructed and reorganized to, to house the special collection? This, this will be reorganized to house the special collections only if the town council approves it. And part of the consideration of the town council approving it is where's the funding going to come from? Um, I've outlined that in some detail in the application, but let's rehearse it. We, we have a grant of 13.8 million from the MBLC if the town will come up with the other 22 million. And whether the town will come up with the 22 million depends upon, uh, we've been saying from the beginning that we think we can raise 6 million of that 22 million. So the town bond funding would have to be only in the amount, only in the amount of 16 million. If we can't raise that 6 million, the chances of the town approving an entire 22 million in bond funding is considerably less likely considerably less likely. So the, the, uh, the uh, uh, presence of that six million in funding from other sources is exceedingly important, to, is, is likely to be a make or break factor in this larger project. Going down one more level, the possibility of our raising that six million dollars depends heavily upon our ability to obtain a major grant from the CPA committee. So that's where that fits fits in in, yes. in in terms of the contributions, other than the town bonding. Yes, the, 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 we we need to clarify with the town whether the CPA grant reduces the town bond funding from sixteen to fifteen million, or helps us raise that six million dollars in other funding, and. Um, where I would assume the town is concerned that if it lowered the town's bond funding, that wouldn't respond. That wouldn't respond very favorably to the question that was asked at the last project. Why isn't the town um, doing this? CPA money is not intended to reduce the operating budgets of towns. It's to it, the intent of the CPA funding is to make possible quality of life projects that wouldn't otherwise happen. And that's where this CPA funding is very likely to make this happen or not. Does that make you, should I go back over that again? That's a complicated. No, 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 no. So we've got the space as part of the plan if this gets approved. Right. We're going to move the special collection to this new space, no matter what, if, the, if it gets built. Yes. And I, I guess I'm having a, 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 a difficult time wrapping my head around you're requesting it for the special collections to preserve and protect, but but I'm having a difficulty wrapping my head around how that actually fits into what is a plan here. Um, can I jump in? Sure. Um, so I'm not sure if this is the direction that you're going at, but on I don't know what page it is on the in the proposal. There's the overall summary budget which yeah. is what we asked, the CPA asked for last time, finally, um, to ha have the proposal resubmitted with a line item budget that related specifically to special collections. So that's all, my understanding is that's all been, been um, uh, Grow up pressed in, into a budget that is specific for this project only. So when it references fire protection, it is fire protection for special collections. It's not a portion of fire protection for the whole library. So it's, it's just separating out the space and the content of the space. Right. Yeah. And it's, um, let me just see if I can figure out, I think it's page 29 of the proposal. Okay. So you can see that budget. Oops. And I actually, um. While we're there, I had a couple of questions um, just in terms of definitions of what's on there. One of them was um, 
what finishes and equipment and furnishings refer to specifically. I think that's, is this what you were referring to, Robin? Yeah. Uh, 23,000 and uh, I'll have, well, that summary is um, a summary of the later detail, the pages and uh, detail in later pages. So if you go down to page, let's see, what the, that would be of that. Um, oh, here you uh, go. Like, yeah, equipment is oh, okay. Yeah, right. okay. here. Yes, yes. Um, and now I can't tell you exactly what commercial equipment is, and I'd be happy to get an answer to that. Uh, you know, you can guess that it's um, part of the HVA system. I don't know. I would have to get you an answer to that. Okay. All right. I mean, I think I'm just, um, I'm guessing that the um, CPA committee will want to know. Well, I did, <laughs> the CPA committee did ask what the exterior closure was. On right. The, and and I consulted the architects, and that is that one wall of the, the if you go back to the drawing, um, the right side wall of the special collections is the exterior wall of the building. That has right. to be done. It's, that's right. part of the enclosure of the special collections area. And the detail, uh, so you'd have to go, oh, uh, here, okay, there's exterior closure B20, and if you go to the next, I think it's, four pages later, there is a description of what that consists of, but basically it's creating the exterior, one wall of the special collections area is the exterior wall of the building. There you go. Mm -hmm. Thank so, you. You know, la uh, last year when this was brought up, sorry, this is Nate, um, there was some discussion about because this is on the ground floor, you know, is there ample security, whether it's on doors or windows, to protect the collections. And I just want to make sure that that's addressed. So, you know, you have um, different, you know, a fire suppression and other systems in place. And is there, you know, whether it's, um, you know, safer windows or an alarm system, you know, if a door, if, you know, can doors be propped open and just left open? So I just, you know, make sure that that's uh, covered. Yes, we can, we can, we can definitely confirm that, but I feel certain that the architects address that and um, we'll, we'll confirm. Mm -hmm. Good. I'd like to ask two, two questions of clarification. One is in the um, <coughs> footprint, the, the plot of the building. Uh, just to make sure we understand whether new new space, new construction, is taking place within the 1928 footprint or whether it is something different because I'm, I'm, I'm hearing a little bit of uh, maybe a, a kind of overlapping of terms there. Um, if we look at the, at the original footprint of the building. Sorry, if I'm making you dizzy, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hard yeah. on the, yeah. so the hard the the thick lines what what i'm understanding is that the thick lines show the the main block of the original structure and then to the to the right or to the east that is still within the footprint of the original structure but it is now being rehabilitated for special collections is that correct Yes, uh, that's, that's, I mean, that, I don't know how else to answer it because if you go down to the next exhibit D, okay, I think you can see the same thick lines. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And if you go uh, up two exhibits, you can see the original footprint. Yes. The, and it's the same, well, it's turned, yeah. it's the same yeah. shape. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just what I just wanted to sort of get the, you know, the 1928 building and the terminology about new new space kind of straightened out. So thank you. And then um, second has to do with kind of segregating uh, this portion of a larger plan. So segregating the preservation of special collections uh, through rehabilitation of structure, 
uh, protective systems and furnishings and fittings. So that is about 1.8 million, that, yeah. that part of it. And uh, so asking for a million from CPA, eight, you know, the, the point eight, the 780,000 would be coming from other sources coming from fundraising or grant or, you know, it, it is necessarily uh, some other f uh, source of funding is necessary for this proposal. Yes, that, that, that's what makes, in our view, this proposal particularly efficient is that we're going to be able to accomplish a historic preservation goal um, for a CPA grant that's a lot less than the total cost. And um, maybe one last... And, and by, could I just also point out that we've, we've sort of, in our effort to uh, detach this project from the larger project, we've completely ignored the fact that you couldn't achieve this facility for special collections as a standalone building for the million seven. That is, in addition to the cost of these walls, you're going to get a roof and a front door and a walkway and everything else that's going to be paid for as the cost of the rest of the building. In other words, making this part of the larger project achieves some additional efficiencies in, in addition to the funding that you did, uh, of sharing that you just talked about. And then, um... I think maybe I have just two more questions. One is, um, town bar, I mean, the, the town portion, the, the non, let's, how shall we put this? The non uh, library commissioner grant for this uh, is about 22, 21, 22 million. And are you not, um, what, why are you not asking the town for the 21, 22 million? <laughs> because we think the town is already stretched to <laughs> consider 16 million. That is, it's just, um, this is a, this is an attempt to give this town a fantastic resource. And it's, you, you get what you pay for. And um, for the town to try to come up with all that money on its own, uh, we just didn't think was politically feasible. Okay. Uh, and then finally, a sort of technical <coughs> about the fire suppression system is, is so I see that the estimate um, envisions a missed system, but at that cost that must be without the central plant for the MIST system. Um, is the rest of the library going to be on a MIST system? I don't think so. This is a, I have pressed both the architects and the, well, the architects who arranged for this estimate to make sure that this was the cost of this and uh, I have been reassured that this is the complete cost and this will be a separate system from the rest of the library. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think, I think right. the part of the explanation is that installing this with new construction, you know, when you get when the whole building is gutted, is just a lot more economical than trying to retrofit an older building. And that's the as far as I've been able to determine, that's as much of an explanation of why this is so economical. Okay, thank you. Okay, are there other questions from commissioners at this point? Um, are there any Final comments that Kent, Hugh, or Sharon, or Cindy would like to make. I, I think um, we I think this is the, the, the application speaks for itself, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's, there's a lot there. Uh, but we appreciate your help with this. Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for uh, for the 
proposal and for coming to speak with us tonight. It's, it's certainly very helpful to hear, uh, to, you know, to be able to figure out details as we sit together. So thank you. Well, we'd be happy to answer any other questions that come up too. Just um, shoot us an email. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you, you all. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, the third proposal for us tonight is the um, North Common and Main Street parking lot. Great. So I'm going to add in um, Chris and Dave who are here. Um, let's see, promote to panelists. Hi, Chris. Good evening. How is everybody? Yes. Hello. Thanks. Is Dave there too? Um, Dave is here. Yes. So I, I did put together a little presentation just because I thought um, some people on the com commission were not part of the original group that. Um, yep, here you go. In the other. Um, in the other years when we came uh, to the commission to ask for support for getting funding from CPA. So I just, uh, I'll run through it quickly if you don't mind, um, because I think it's sort of um, a logical presentation. Um, so I wanted to report on the progress and also to request that you support our um, request to CPA for $250,000 to help with the construction of the North Common Project. Um, we've been working on this project since about 2013. We've held three public forums. Um, we ha <clears throat> had a working group made up of citizens and staff. And um, some of the people here tonight were actually part of that working group, Jane Wald and Jen Marquart. And we had members of the LSSE Commission as well. Um, Dave and I were part of that group. Um, I wanted to show you a few pictures of um, the, the current situation here and also talk about why we're doing this. Current conditions of the common are, are pretty bad. Um, there hasn't been a lot of attention paid to it in, in the years, um, well, since the 60s. If you'd go back to the previous slide, then I can show everybody exactly where mm -hmm. we're talking about. Town Hall is here, the Main Street parking lot, the green area in the middle is the um, North Common, the area to the right where all the tents are is the Spring Street parking lot where the um, farmer's market occurs. So that just gives you a little context. So on to the next sl slide. Mm -hmm. Another, that's a picture of the existing conditions in the winter. And next slide is um, really just what are we doing here? Uh, it's a historic site. It includes the historic WCTU Women's Christian Temperance Union fountain with a cute little dog fountain off to its side. Um, the, the existing conditions are that it has very poor drainage and really no turf. Um, we add um, mulch to it periodically to make it, you know, so it's not just a sea of mud. It lacks accessibility. Um, it only has one path that goes right through, kind of diagonally through it. Um, it's very limited as to seating and lighting and gathering spaces. But it is an important place for, town, for the town center, and we would like to make it more of a... Um, a central gathering space and a, and a really nice space for the town. It also has a number of really beautiful old public shade trees. So if you have the next slide, um, it's as old as Amherst. Um, it's part of the right of way. It's not um, a piece of property. Uh, the town council has jurisdiction over the town common because it is part of the right of way. Um, many boards and committees are involved in its maintenance and planning. Um, it is in part of an original historic common and it's not a park. It's been used for civic events and communal uses and gatherings over the years. And it's been continually redesigned over the years to accommodate changing public needs. So next slide. Um, this is a picture of a map from 1740 that shows um, two um, major rights of way that ran through the, through the town. One is the... Um, North Pleasant, South Pleasant, um, 
complex really on the left. And the other one is the south e Northeast Street, Southeast Street complex. So these green dots represent um, some of the commons in town. The one on the left is the uh, main uh, town common that we're talking about now. To the right of that is the East, um, East Village Common. And then below that is the South Amherst Common at the, um, where, the, where the church is and, and the Munson Library. So on to the next slide. This is another historic map of the town. And you can see the town common as this long rectangular piece here. Um, the northern part of it, the nor northern part above that, um, that ellipse is uh, the North Common that we're talking about now. The very southern part of it, below the ellipse, um, all the way down at the bottom of this rectangle, is actually still part of the Town Common, but Amherst College maintains it. So it actually looks like Amherst College property, which is kind of an interesting thing. Um, next slide. Here's a picture of the town common from sometime in the 1800s. I'm not sure how they got up so high at that time, but uh, it shows that it was basically a green space surrounded by trees and it has um, a fence around it. And I don't know if they were grazing animals there at that time, but um, you can see there are a few kind of circular or uh, serpentine paths. Oh, yeah. Next slide. This is a picture of the Frederick Law Olmsted design for the town common. It's a very curvilinear design and it does show um, a bandstand on the east side, um, which we'll be talking about in the future when we talk about the bandstand. But the, the red um, square here is the portion of the common that we're actually talking about now. And you can see the yellow um, rectangle there is where town hall is. Okay, the next slide. So these are pictures of the town common from, um, you know, this is probably from the 30s or 40s. It's, it's one of those colored um, postcards. Next slide. Okay. This one is showing the beautiful elm trees that used to line the common and the Grace Church is off to the left there. And the next slide. <laughs> the next slide is what happened in the, in the 50s. 50s and 60s, I guess, where we started to eat into the common to create parking. Um, but you can see that there was still an old elm tree there. So it has been uh, changing over the years. Um, what does the next slide show? I think we have some pictures of some of the conditions. Oh, this is a, a design that the Conway School did back in the 80s. And really all they were doing was adding one new path and adding some trees and trying to uh, rejuvenate the, the lawn area around there. So next slide. So this gives you an impression of what happens to the common when it rains. It really doesn't have anything to hold the soil in place and the roots become exposed and um, the soil becomes compacted and there's poor drainage. So those are some of the problems that we're trying to solve. Next slide. This shows the uh, mm. slope of the um, common from the North Common from Northeast to northwest to southeast, there's about a 16 foot grade change there. So it is, um, it's challenging for people who are uh, trying to get around there who may not be as mobile as some of the others of us, um, but it does show the location of the shade trees. Next slide. Um, and this shows some of the pathways, both through the common and surrounding the common that we'd like to improve. You can see that the pavement has deteriorated and there are a lot of bumps and cracks and we'd like to fix those so people uh, you know able-bodied people and and handicapped people will be able to enjoy the common um, next slide I don't think there are too many more just more pictures of yeah uh, like when it rains and I think that's probably it is there one more thing one more slide to show yeah just the uh, tree boxes oh, here yeah, yeah so so those were put in in the 60s and they've seen better days and it's time to <laughs> So um, just to, oh, and this is um, pictures of what it is today. There's the WCTU fountain there and a picture of newly rehabilitated um, paving along the Spring Street parking lot. Um, so I just wanted to tell you that in 2016 and 2018, uh, DPW worked with us to develop a concept plan and we applied twice for CPAC funding and we did receive funding in both of those fiscal years to the amount of $550,000. And we started working on a plan for the North Common, hiring Weston and Sampson, landscape architects from Boston. Um, and while we were working on the concept plan with them, we were made aware 
maybe we already knew this, but we put two and two together and said to ourselves, well, the Main Street parking lot is also being worked on at the same time. So why don't we try to put the two projects together and see how we can make it even a better place. Um, so we went to town meeting in 2018 and received uh, the uh, approval to borrow up to $450,000, $400,000 of which was earmarked for the Main Street parking lot. So now we had $950,000, which seems like a lot of money, but it's not, it wasn't quite enough. Um, so we moved along in the design process and while we were working with the public and members of the Historical Commission and members of the Leisure Services Group, um, we decided that it was really, um, that we really needed to take advantage of the area in front of Town Hall and try to make it more welcoming and more useful, not only as a parking lot, but also as a gathering space and potentially as a, a performance space or speeches or a farmer's market, all kinds of things could go on there if we made it a little more welcoming and not just a, a sea of asphalt. So um, Western and Samson came up with their pre preferred plan. And could you show that, Ben? I think it's part of the um, presentation that we made too. Yep, is it, this is the one? This is the preferred plan. This is the plan that we came up with, with Weston and Sampson, and it shows um, some of the parking being taken away. The rest of the parking becomes a plaza area that is um, paved with concrete pavers that could be used as a, as a plaza or it could be used as a parking space, but it kind of gives a grander entrance to Town Hall. Um, the whole entrance into Town Hall, including the area down at the bottom of the stairs, is all um, renovated and made uh, nicer. There's also, in the northwest corner of the, of the North Common, would be um, a more gracious entry into the Common where you would have a place where people could stand or people could sit along those steps that you see coming down there, and then they could um, enter into the North Common along this elegant curved pathway. And in the middle is um, a seating gathering space that could have chairs and tables. It could also be used for um, playing games. It could be um, another kind of space where people have, um, say, poetry readings or book readings or things like that. And then the pathway continues on down to the south east corner. So you can really walk through the common in both directions now, um, given this plan, not just one direction. We also made improvements to Boltwood Avenue, making it one way and um, still providing parking, but imp improving the, um, the sidewalk there and also improving the sidewalk on the opposite side, which is along uh, South Pleasant Street. So this picture that you're looking at here, um, the cost estimate came up to 1.9 million. And um, so uh, that was a kind of a, a surprise. Um, and we, um, but we'd still like to make this project happen because it's such a great project. And mm -hmm. it could be construed as part of a, a greater effort to make the downtown really lovely. And that would be um, along with the new playground at Kendrick Park, um, a possible parking garage, a band shell for the southern part of the common and improvements to the downtown sidewalks and crosswalks and streetscapes. So as I said, the cost estimate for this lovely plan is 1.9 million. Um, it, uh, we would need an, an additional approximately $1 million to build this project. Um, our current CPAC includes about 500,000. Our current CPAC request includes 500,000 250,000 from the historical preservation funds and 250,000 from recreation funds. Um, let's see, is there anything I left out? Yes, Guilford has been helpful recently in looking at the Western and Sampson plan and trying to figure out, mm -hmm. is there a way of um, making it less expensive? Is there a way of making it, um, of, of managing to save more of the trees? So he had his staff put together an alternative plan, and I think Ben has it here in his um, his pack. Mm. Um, there it is. Yes, so, uh, one of Guilford staff members um, worked up this plan, which has a lot of the same features. It has um, the entryway from. It's kind of flipped around. I don't know if you can rotate it. Um, yeah, yeah, I can rotate it so it's the same orientation here. 
Yeah, so that's better. So you can see the entry from the northwest is still that graceful entry. The pathways across the site are, there's still one going from north west to southeast. There's still one coming from the direction of um, Town Hall going over towards Hastings. There's a nice gathering space in the middle of the park, of the, of the common. And then the parking lot, it's drawn as if it were uh, asphalt but we're hoping that we could um, pave it with really nice con concrete mm -hmm. pavers and make it part of a grand entry to town hall. This plan here, um, Guilford's people managed to save most of the trees, so we're very happy about that. Um, and so I just wanted to show you this. So, so we're hoping that you will support our request to CPAC for $250,000 in historical preservation funding so that we can build this um, lovely design and, and make, it, um, make it really a part of uh, a beautiful jewel in the downtown. So do you have any questions? Why don't you go back to the other plan? Mm -hmm. It's a little more leave it, leave it one for a second. How much does... Um the DPW plan shave off the Weston and Sampson estimate? You'd have to ask Guilford about that. Is he still here? He yes. is, yeah. Guilford is here. Now he wishes he hadn't stayed. Uh -huh. He wishes he hadn't stayed. Uh -huh. I, I doubt that it's it a lot off. It sort of depends on whether we pay the, the parking lot with the really nice pavers or not, but Guilford could probably give a better answer. Uh, we're, we're still in the conceptual phase here. And every time we turn around, we keep running into an ADA conflict and ending up having to put a wall and some handrails and a, a, an interesting twist to get, get around it. Um, we're not exactly sure how much we're gonna shave off that number. We're hoping to get at least down to the one and a half or below that number is really where we're hoping to get to. Do you have any concerns that the estimates we're looking at tonight are from January 2019. Actually, I'm confident we, we've bid several projects in the recent, uh, well, actually, we've, we've bid several projects recently, and they've actually all come in a couple hundred thousand dollars below the, nest, the estimate. So um, now's a good time to, to bid projects if you're not doing any pipe work. We're, I mean, a lot of water. Water pipes are going up and um, sewer well, pipe is going up. It seems like just regular horizontal construction with asphalt and concrete and pavers, that type of stuff is staying um, a little more competitive because people are looking for work. We, we are hoping to apply for a park grant next summer wherein we could get as much as $400,000. And um, we're also intending to do some private fundraising. So hopefully we will get up to the uh, amount that we need to build this project. Let's see Dave Zomek's hand. Dave? Sure, good evening everybody. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add a few comments and, and you know, many members of our team are kind of assembled here, it just so happens. So by all means, if there's additional questions, but um, I guess I just wanted to put a finer point on a couple of things that Chris said. Um, I guess starting by saying, you know, I, I, I hope we all recognize many of us have been working to try to improve the North Common for probably more than 10 years, maybe going on 12 to 15. Um, it's, it's a sad and embarrassing space um, for, for the very central core of our downtown. Uh, some of those pictures um, really illustrate what poor condition it's in. As Guilford said, from an engineering standpoint, it's a very challenging space. With, um, with a grade change of uh, 12 to 15 feet from corner to corner. Um, I think we've all probably been out there. If you've walked it at night, it is uneven. It is difficult for people, seniors, people with disabilities. Um, there are many routes. We need to protect the trees. We need to enhance the space. But we also, at the same time, I think, uh, throughout the entire process that many members of the Historical Commission participated in, we want to respect the history of the space. And I think this plan, we're looking now at the plan that DPW um, has come up with in recent weeks and, and over the last four to six weeks. But we want to, we want to respect the, the, the history of the space as well. 
But at the, at the same time, I think we want to activate that space. Um, it is the central core of our downtown. Um, when people come to downtown, whether they're visiting a college, a museum, uh, the historic buildings in town, or, or going to one of our shops or restaurants, this is the space that often they have to walk by or through. And I, for one, um, am not terribly proud of, of how that space looks. And so I think the, the overall goal of the, the project was to improve that space. During the COVID period, our COVID summer, it was interesting and staff have talked about, you know, we put five or six um, picnic tables out on the North Common. And it was fascinating to watch a simple act like putting five or six picnic tables out on the common, how many more people use the North Common for eating, dining, talking, socializing, et cetera. Granted, we're all trying to social distance, but that small act of adding seating where people, families, friends could safely gather really made a big difference. So I think we're looking to improve the drainage, uh, make it, um, and, and all of this, I should, I should um, add on the drainage side, this links to a project that the town is working on with regard to the Fearing Brook. All of the, the North Common and the main part of the Common drain into the Fearing Brook. The town is working on a project to improve the water quality in the Fearing Brook. So it starts really here with all the runoff that comes across the North Common. But we're dealing with runoff, ADA issues, lighting, uh, parking, uh, gathering spaces. We want to make this a place where people want to be, want to eat, uh, socialize, uh, sit down, uh, work on their computers, um, uh, have potential small theater presentations. We also talked about art on the North Common and the potential for small sculptures to uh, supplement the design and build on the design. So that's all I wanted to add. I know that the bid and chamber uh, uh, support us and feel very strongly that they would love to see us come out of COVID and really have a plan for the North Common that the town can get behind. So I think that's one of our, our, our final themes is we wanna help our downtown because it is gonna be a struggle coming out of COVID. And as we, we perhaps engage on this project, if we can pull all the funding together, what a wonderful uh, place that would be in a couple of years. Thanks. Thank you. I wonder if, if someone just as a kind of reminder about uh, I think it was 2016 and 2018, what, um, what historic preservation, uh, CPA historic preservation funds were um, allocated for? I do have that information, yes. I just have to find it. So in 2016, um, there was $180,000 of historical preservation funds. And in 2018, there was another $180,000. So $360,000 altogether and $190,000 for uh, recreation for both of those years. To, uh, 2016, it was 114,000 for recreation and in 2018, it was uh, 76,000 for recreation. Okay, thank you. Um, questions, commissioners? Um, I, have a, I have a question. I'm just trying to figure out how, and this comes out of the experience with the Jones Library last year and figuring out how projects fit within um, the terms of the CPA. Um, so the Jones Library has pr proposal has now made pretty clear detailed um, line item budget about what things are particularly historic. Um, their objective is to preserve special collections. This seems to be followed more under rehabilitation of the historic resource. And um, I'm just curious how, 
I don't even know if this is a, a question for the proposer, um, but maybe with the, the commissioners with more history. How do you define of of the $250,000, what is going towards the historic preservation aspect of the project? Sure, I mean, this is Nate. I can answer that. So, right, so the National Park Service, you know, the standards for rehabilitation are different than preservation. So we're not, you know, proposing to recreate an Olmstead plan here. We're trying to, you know, rehabilitate it with, you know, care in terms of how it's designed um, you know, so for instance, we're not, you know, we're careful about vertical structures. And so there's standards that are being followed here to, you know, modernize it and make it usable, um, but still be, a, you know, part of the historic common. So, you know, that's what rehabilitation, uh, you know, how, that's how that works. So um, also as a contributing landscape in the National Register District, you know, this would be reviewed by Mass Historic as well as the Historical Commission. So as this move forward, it would be something that would be reviewed in terms of, you know, its overall design and materiality. So, you know, I think even the pathways though, the parking, all of that is somewhat reminiscent of the previous plans that Chris showed. So there's still, you know, um, you know, we're not saying we're changing this altogether, um, but, you know, there's still elements from previous plans that are echoed in this current plan. Okay, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the rehabilita rehabilitation and restoration definition and it does say make assets, assets functional for intended use. So I guess that's the part of the rubric that it goes under, that you're taking a historical resource, which is defined, I mean, like you said, but the Mass Historic Commission is gonna provide that confirmation, not that we, you know, not that that's in doubt. And then you just have this more, um, I mean, it's a very, broad statement to make assets functional for intended use, but I get, I just, I just wanted to see where it fits. So thank you. That was, that was very yeah. clarifying. In the fountain, you know, the, the fountain on the plan too is also going to have, you know, a small little sitting area around it. There can be some, you know, more interpretation. So we've talked about, you know, could there be, whether it's signs or other things installed on the, on the common that could be used for interpretation, at least one at the fountain and possibly, you know, in another location. So, you know, calling attention that this is still a common. I mean, right. you know, it's, it's, you know, it's not a property, it's part of the road right of way. And it has been ever since the founding of Amherst. So it's pretty unique that it's maintained that character. Um, yeah, and I always felt when we were on the planning committee talking about this, that it's not just about the design of the common itself for its own use, but it serves to enhance the entire downtown area, if it's designed right, it enhances all the historic buildings that surround it and, you know, creates a, uh, an ongoing um, aesthetically pleasing view of the center of town, I guess. That's kind of how I thought of it too. Um, sometimes, uh, <clears throat> well, for, large um, town projects, a question will come up about how the town has thought about um, capital planning and budgeting for projects uh, that take, you know, some years to uh, come to fruition. Um, and, you know, this one has been, uh, uh, been has been thought about and uh, work has been done on this for, you know, some years now. Um, is it, uh, is it, has it at any time been considered a candidate for capital funding other than the bond authorization? I'm not aware in my time in town hall that it has been. Um, should it be? Jane, I, I think it's a great question. Um, certainly during my time and Guilford's time and Chris, we're all kind of in that same boat of having been with the town for a similar number of years. I, I think it has come up from time to time, um, but honestly, the number of capital demands uh, for buildings, for vehicles, fire engines, um, 
uh, fire station, police station, town hall, uh, roofs, this never really made it near the top of any anyone's list. Um, it's challenging, I think, because we have so many needs that involve vertical, you know, vertical structures, buildings, and then, of course, uh, vehicles for police, fire, and all town services. So it's certainly been discussed, but never, you know, never you know, at a great length, I think. All right. Um, other questions? Is, um, is the maple tree a part of this plan? The famous maple that's lit up? I think um, that maple is not part of this plan. It's, um, I, my understanding is it's a Norway maple and it's um, an invasive species and it's not in great condition, but Guilford could probably enlighten us more about that. If in this plan, in this plan, there's actually two trees that come, uh, three trees that come down, and one of them is the uh, Mary Maple. I mean, I've only been in town three years, and that tree is pretty, pretty significant. Um, it's not the first Mary Maple, though. There have been a number of them. It's kind of like Lassie. It gets replaced regularly. <laughs> My understanding... <laughs> from snow was that it, the, the Christmas lights are kind of holding it together at this point. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I always think of it as just, you know, one in a long line. <laughs> I, I remember the Mary Maple being closer to town hall. I mean, there wasn't, there was a maple that was closer to town hall that was the Mary Maple at that time. The historic photograph that um, you showed, Christine, had, had, um, the suggestion of a, of an, a sort of alley of, of elms um, in front of Town Hall was a really amazing photograph. Um, kind of, you know, exactly where the parking is, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if Ben can bring that back again. It's yeah, I can try to find that. It was in this slideshow, right? Yeah. There it is. That's heading south. Yep. There you go. That's it, yeah. It's a double LA of elms. So elms aren't um, something that we would plant these days because they don't do well here. But, um, and it looks like a lot of this land is taken up with trees, doesn't it? So one of the things we want to do is make the uh, town common useful for people. And I think there was an earlier photograph of the town common surrounded by trees, but the center of it was really open. So over the years, you know, trees have come and gone. The, the gray, um, not this photograph, but previous to that. The aerial view, there. Ben, the aerial view where somebody this was in one. a balloon. Yeah, that one. Yeah, so this one is showing that much of it was open grassy area surrounded by rows of trees or lined by rows of trees on either long side. Um, so it has, you know, ebbed and flowed with trees over the years in terms of them filling up the space or just lining the, the open space. What year was this, did you say? I think this, this is sometime in the 1800s, but I'm not really sure exactly when. Okay. So it must have been a hot air balloon. I think it might have been before Town Hall was built. I see Grace Church there, which was built in 1868. But do I see Town Hall? Is that Town Hall behind it? I'm not sure. No, Town Hall was, the Later Palmer before. block burned down in the 1880s. So no, this is sometime between 1868 and 1890. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not, it's not like, we're bound by some window of significance architecturally or historically, are we? I mean, we could be, we could, right, everybody's saying no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, Hedy, were you going to like having a certain planting plan or what are you just? Uh, you know, I, was, I mean, I'm just, yeah, I mean, I'm so new to this 
area that, um, you know, it's just great seeing all these pictures and um, I think people will be interested to hear about how, how this project has evolved and why. And, um, you know, even if it isn't available in a, you know, a huge description of, of the project on the common itself, if there's a place where it can be explained, I think that would be, you know, really nice. Um, mm -hmm. Just knowing what's been there before, dig, digging down where you are in terms of placemaking, I think is, is going to be really important to people um, going forward. And, uh, you know, I love knowing about the right of way, the fact that that, as you said, Nate, that it's always, that's always been there in town. Um, you know, before I get on my high horse and say, goodness me, you know, why have we got parking and cars in front of town hall? <laughs> you know, I mean, just, just knowing about the, 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 speci the specificity of this place is, is uh, really helpful. Yeah, I mean, I think in this image, if you look at the northern end, yep. I mean, the part of the north, of the, you know, the northern part of the common we're talking about is crisscross with paths. And yep. it's, you know, it's kind of the more urban it's, area of the common, you know, the yeah, central the common. The area, that crisscrossed area way up there. Yep in front of that building, which has since gone away, right? Yep. And in between those trees on the bottom left, it looks like there's sheep or animals of some kind grazing. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's fenced in, too. Mm -hmm. It does look like that. Huh? There's a serpentine fence through there. Yeah. We're not proposing that as part of this project. Just <laughs> <laughs> oh, wouldn't it be nice, though? <laughs> Bring your sheep to the common and let them graze. <laughs> just think all the mowing cost we'd save. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Chris, Dave, Gilford. Thank you for um, bringing this, uh, especially this really evocative slideshow to us. Thank, thank you for listening to us. And we hope you support this project. <laughs> thank it you. Still Thanks, Chris. Thank you. All right. All right, so let's see. Um, now we have uh, discussion and evaluation of CPA proposals, and I have two uh, just two questions about um, one is about the CPA CPAC, the committee's um, timeline, uh, which may mean we need to finish up our work tonight, um, and the other is about the email that went out about a kind of review matrix. So what, what is this? Just to make sure we know what the CPA uh, timeline is. Is that, Robin, do you, can you answer? Um, yeah, I was trying to look it up here. Don't have that already. It's funny, it's not, Oh, here, maybe packs. Yeah, the um, the website does not, you know, have a nice, um, you know, information is kind of buried on it, so it's hard to. Uh... The let's see, come on. There was a a, a draft. Yeah, schedule. I found it. So on um, in September they laid out the schedule where um, they would meet, you know, through October and review proposals and have presentations. And then, um, you know, by November 19th, you know, so by then November, they would vote on their recommendations. Yeah, so the 12th is supposed to be the public hearing and then the 19th, the vote. Okay. So we need to get our recommendations to them before the 12th. Is that the timeline for us? Yeah I, yeah, I think so. Think best, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means we need to um, do a good bit of work in the next uh, half hour or so. Um, Is, did anybody prepare a list of each thing and the cost for us? What are we looking at here for total numbers? Um, I, I just put it up on my 
Google spreadsheet. Uh, it's like a, it's, there's a million dollars and million twenty seven thousand dollars in requests from but the historical end of things or everybody that's the historical end of things okay how can, how can that be if the library is asking for a million the library is actually a holdover from last year okay so that's not part of the, the... that's not part of this year's total yeah uh, wouldn't it have to be though, Robin? I mean, that was never um, that was never voted on. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So it's a holdover, but it's not real money to them. Right, but it's it's uh, that's so, so it's it's bonded. If it's bonded, then it goes forward, and then it doesn't even hit. Correct me if I'm wrong, Nate, but it doesn't even hit this year's numbers. Like, let's say we bonded a million dollars over ten years, it would be the FY twenty three budget that would see the first debt service payment. Right, Correct? so. Okay, so we, so you wouldn't, you, you could approve that now and know that it was coming out of FY23 to, I don't even wanna say what FY, what FY32? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, it would be factored into debt service. Right. Um, and how much is available for historic preservation? Good question. There, I had a hundred and eleven thousand is the ten percent requirement, and then there was a um, reserve from last year that I don't have the number of. I didn't get in time for the meeting. I can't remember how much that was. Okay. It, and then, finally, do we know how much in all CPA funds is available for this year? that is not, uh, does not need to be spent on debt service or anything like that. Uh, I never have that number correct. They were, um, sorry, I, I pulled up an earlier budget from September, Robin. So they were saying um, it'd be, it'd be um, like 1.13 million. Before, after debt service? That is after debt service. So it's, you know, 1.53 total. And then there's, okay. you know, almost 400,000 in debt service. Um, bring it down to 1.1. 1 .1. Okay. So that's, that's 1.1 1, 1 .1 available for all categories. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense because that's when the estimate was of 10% was $111,000 per, per the for the three categories. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I've, I've opened the, the web page that you all linked us to for historic preservation with the list of the six projects, but mm -hmm. I don't see anywhere a list just like that with the numbers. So can you tell us for each one what exactly the numbers are so that I can just make a list of like, what's the Goodwin, what's the Mill River Trail, what's North Amber Slavery Well Prepared, the total amount they're asking us for in one place. Do you want me to go, I just pulled that together. Do you want me to just state that, Nate? I mean, you can you send, show your screen yeah, or? Um, yeah, can you share your email, If you email it to Ben or I, we can display it. Yes. All right. I don't have it. I don't have it on the sh the machine that I'm okay. broadcasting from. But hold on. Yeah, I thought I, I, I thought there I thought I had it, but I can't. Um, yeah. This usually comes in our agenda for the meeting where we make the decision. Just so you know, Ben, for next year, we usually have that in front of us. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So you know, in any event, we're over. I mean, just the historic preservation projects. <laughs> are over budget um by a lot <laughs> by yeah. a lot um can I just I just before we even go down that road um the slate roofs and the steps were two projects that all the all the funds for the projects were were being requested from historic preservation is that correct and when we sort of asked for uh, a budget that tees things apart a little bit and maybe shifted the nature of the ask. 
we don't have that as far as mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, I don't think we're ever, you know, how to revise budget. I think, you know, during the discussion, there was some question of, you know, could, you know, prioritize the roofs and maybe, you know, eliminate the south steps on the town hall just to, you know, are there ways right. to, um, you know, either prioritize the budget or change, you know, reduce it. Um, yeah, like to 210 instead of 265, I think is where we kind of got to on that. Taking off the south steps in the design of the south. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, I think for the commission, so I, I don't know if people receive Robin's email, you know, the commission, um, you know, typically the commission um, assumes all products are eligible. There were some questions about the previous proposal. So there could be a discussion, you know, are some of these um, proposals this year, are they meeting the eligibility criteria for CPA? And then, you know, the question becomes, does the commission want to prioritize these um, in a rank order, you know, however it falls within, you know, preservation, the preservation plan or master plan, or is there kind of a, a more general sense about um, the importance of these and, you know, have general recommendations. So in years past, it's been a combination of both. It's been, you know, a pretty, um, you know, a rank order, or it's been more of a summary statement and, um, you know, general recommendations. So I think that's something to discuss how, you know, how you'd want to structure structure well, this year yeah i mean there's there would also be the question of, uh, of recommending something but like we did with the jones but not recommending it at the level that they asked for right right so you could be ranked number one but not get uh, not get a recommendation of all the funding that you requested yeah we usually do that hey, right. can you take robin's email and share the screen or yeah yeah i'm doing that right now yeah, yeah i mean i um yeah, it is interesting with, you know, uh, between the other categories, I mean, you know, there's uh, a few recreation proposals and there's um, a few housing proposals and, uh, you know, some of the housing proposals, just two housing proposals are, you know, uh, the full budget of the CPA. So I think, you know, there's like, I think there's probably two to three times the amount requested as is available. And so, you know, my thought is, um, whether or not the CPA committee recommends it for bonding, I think that's a really, um, you know, kind of a difficult decision for the council to bond so much and so many projects. So, you know, to, you know, so my thought is that either projects are going to be reshaped or reduced, or some may not be, um, you know, receive any funding just because it's just, there's just so many requests. So, if you all have. Uh, have received Robin's email, um, and Robin, you can speak to this. Uh, uh, actually, um, I, this is the matrix, Robin, that you had sent. So if we go yeah. up about go up some to the steps that suggesting in first of all identifying the historic resource and then identifying the verb uh, uh, to make sure that every everything we're looking at kind of fits mm -hmm. is that do do we, feel we can do that yeah it's right mm -hmm. there yeah. you're on it yeah oh, okay cool yeah yeah um, um do I mean, we want to go proposal by proposal from the bottom up get some momentum going right. with these smaller proposals <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, yeah. I guess. Our engine moving, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, like I said at the discussion, there were some questions about, um, you know, for instance, the, um, the, archae the community archaeology, you know, how is that an eligible CPA expense? So, you know, whether or not it is historic, you know, historic in nature, is it eligible for CPA funding? Um, and then mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's yes, that was the Mill River Walk. Right. right. So, yeah. so do we want to do we want to go one by one? Yeah, maybe that's better. Uh, let's, yeah. yeah, let's do that. Just before we do that, can you? I just am trying to get a number for each one of them. What was the number Chris was asking for for the North Common? 
right here. It's two hundred fifty thousand. Two fifty. Okay. And then what's not on here is Jones Library, I think. Oh right. I did. Yeah, I didn't. I was sort of separating that out, but that's just okay. a. That's a clean million. <laughs> okay. Now. <nah. laughs> And that's the only one that's not, that's the only one we're missing, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, do we want to... Uh, they were asking us for a million? I thought they were asking for less from Ms. us. Jones is asking nope. for a million, yeah. Uh -huh. Do we want to separate um, town proposals from other proposals? That's what I would suggest. I'd suggest we mm -hmm. tackle the three non-town first because there's some, or the two, 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 yeah, uh, two. <laughs> yeah. And they're all, they also happen to, well, I guess one of them's a little bit larger. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so Goodwin and Mill River. That's the first two on our list. So I think with Goodwin, you know, we had recommended adding, you know, possibly adding some uh, a percentage for contingency and so I think that you know whether or not I don't know if Nancy you know we were thinking it could be like a you know 18,000 or you know knowing that some of her estimates may have been low and or um and you know, she mentioned that at the CPA meeting so did she provide an updated number at all Robin I don't think so but um yeah but she made it clear that that we had recommended that <laughs> Well, we could, uh, if we approve this, we could approve it at a range of 12 mm -hmm. to 18. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, my, my if, you know, with the Goodwin Church, I thought it was pretty straightforward. My only concern is that the estimates could have been from a contractor that I think that was familiar with the church. And if you had a different contractor, mm -hmm. the numbers might be higher and it would just be unfortunate if this was approved for funding, it wouldn't be enough. Um, well, let's just hold a place with 12 and then kind of work from there until we get started with somebody. Okay. So in terms of this project, um, just to go with this, you know, identify the resource, identify the verb, I would say, you know, it's pretty straightforward. The, the resource is the church. Um, it is, uh, it's on the historical is it on the National Historical Register, Nate? Yeah, it's individually listed. So it's oh, one okay, of the few right. buildings in town. Yeah. So it qualifies through that. And then we're, the objective is to preserve the building. Mm -hmm. So nice and straightforward. <laughs> That's a good, easy one. All right. So you want to do the, I, the eligibility piece first, and then later we can go to these other criteria in the table? Sure. Okay. All right. So that's a good one. Mill River Walk. Yeah, that one's just interesting trying to figure out the resource. It's like almost a whole. Um, yeah, they're asking for all of the 51, right, from us? So um, I have some things to say about that particular proposal, um, if you don't mind my jumping in. Please go ahead. Um, I think the first thing I would know, I'm just trying to find it in my list here, is that um, it's, a, it's a request for planning. It's not a request for an active preservation um, and so that would be my first reservation there's not a resource that's being protected because it's creating it's essentially creating a written document and I know we talked about this last time um, there is I didn't I forgot to forward this on to you Nate and Jane but there was um, in the Jones library discussion there was a piece that we got from Diana Stein that was um, guidance from the Department of Revenue that had something specific about a specific, a specific example that a history of a town could not qualify for historic preservation um, funding under the CPA. So I don't feel that it qualifies because of the nature of the proposal. I mean, I have another issue with the number that they came up for and number and timeline that they came up for uh, 
for the um, consultant just because there wasn't really any backup of how they estimated the amount of time that would take over the course of years, the year, or you know what the what the salary would be for this that person. But I would say right off the bat, I would disqualify it on the basis of it not being eligible, which isn't to say that I don't think it's a good idea. So if they had had um, a study done and they were ready to start, and they wanted money for say installing signs or I don't know fixing reinforcing foundations or something that would qualify um yeah i don't know i don't know if interpretive signs qualify I minute mean, then then it gets into this question of whether you, if you're under if you're under the verb of preserve you the the dor guidelines seem to be really specific about wanting to have a specific physical object mm. that you're preserving um but, but i think yeah so i think that's where there's some interpretation you know does you know, um, you know, is education and awareness through signs or other interpretive material is that protection? And you know, we've the town we've argued before that it is. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think with that proposal, it was unclear though. I mean, you know, the commission had talked about adding uh, signs or making it a trail, but really the proposal didn't have any elements in there related to that. It was, you know, um, I don't, right, I don't even think that any uh, site restoration work it was just about studying it and yeah and they were trying to sell it to us with the education aspect which is right. great but it doesn't have anything to do with us it's better to do something like go to umass and ask them to give students credit in a course structure for doing the work or something than to ask us for money right and robin you know did they ask has this been presented to the cpa committee um you know the meetings are coming so close together but I, I, I can't answer that question. <laughs> you know, when someone, had, someone had, <laughs> there, there, you know, between, between yeah, Meg, you know, Meg, and, Meg and, and I don't go know, to a physical place anymore. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, ben and I, uh, Meg, you know, Ben and I after the commission meeting, and then um, someone had mentioned having this be a recreation project. And I said that that's, you know, it is actually, um, I think the CPA committee at one time recommended that to her staff did. Uh -huh. uh, that would be, you know, it would be eligible under that um, and the area that would be under is both conservation and recreation, but I'm not sure they did that. So, um, you know, whether or not the commission would want to recommend that. So maybe, you know, is it eligible for historic preservation? If not, is it something the commission would want to say that it's still a, an interesting project? Could it be a recreation um, request? I, you know, I, I, don't know. I just need to say good night. I need to sign off now to meet my other commitment. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Pat. Sorry Thanks, about Pat. that. Good night. Good night. Nate, I think that would be a nice way of letting them down. I mean, if we say it isn't eligible, but consider applying to the other, they'd have to wait till next year, right? They couldn't do it now. Uh, I'm not sure if they could pivot that quickly, if the CPA committee would allow that, but. Makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. I I think we should recommend that. That sounds that sounds reasonable. Yeah. It's not like we're looking for enough to cover our ten percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those projects which I I really like because it it considers you know not an isolated building but a sort of continuum of sites and historic mm -hmm. interest, which I think really um, has its own merits. Um, I don't really have a strong feeling about um, how it gets funded, but I think it would be great if it could go to another committee to recreation because, and conservation, because it does seem to be, you know, a good fit. So, I, I mean, I see it. I see it as a really good idea. I also see it as an, in its really beginning stages. And I think it's a good idea to recommend it um, outside of, of historic preservation. Um, but um, I was just thinking about how the review process provides, you know, has an expectation and provides guidelines for um, bumping someone to the next year to present a more fully fleshed out 
proposal. Um, and I, I guess if it's if we're not going to take it under eligibility, then that um, that that we don't have to answer that question. But it seems you know sort of like it's come more as an idea and less as a full proposal. So I don't have people lined up from you know the mm -hmm. so anyway that was one thing. But the other thing is that she mentioned something about um, written resources that were a danger of being lost. And I, I don't know what they were, what she was referencing at that point in um, the conversation, but it, it would be good to get that message to the applicant that if there is some sort of physical documents or that would be something that, I mean, I don't know how we would fund it, but. I mean, they could just be donated to special collections at this point. I mean, if it's someone's personal Right. Scripts or, you know, history, right. you know, it, that could be. So, so I guess I'm looking for the link to be able to tell them, you know, that, that, that we want to be able to facilitate that kind of action coming out of a proposal like this so that they don't wait until they get money to move the project forward for, you know, preserving any kind of written documentation that. that yeah, I mean, Robin, you know, I, I hear what you're saying that this wasn't this proposal was almost, you know, too preliminary to even, you know, maybe to be suggested this round, you know, that they could right. have reached out to UMass, had estimates. I mean, you know, we've asked the other, we usually ask someone, an applicant that they have ta talked to their consultants, they have, you know, drawings or cost estimates and it's a real project and. Right. Um, I wonder if yeah. uh, still, if the uh, Massachusetts Preservation Projects Fund is still active, uh, I believe they have some technical assistance grants or planning grants. Yeah. So I guess it's sort of like, it's the missing step between you get a, a proposal that's not well developed, you can't fund it and you don't know how to, I don't know what, what part of the process the applicant gets feedback to help them come so that they come back with a good proposal like how do we how do we close that loop right yeah i think we need to have a process but it also needs to be very closely tied into an explicit and understandable process that the cpa committee has because i think it's really cpa committee that where um, potential applicants will look first for you know, the guidelines, the timeline. Um, so they need to be referred back to the appropriate committee, I think. So maybe we can have a discussion about process um, on another, at another yeah, meeting, right. given time mm -hmm. and everything. But I just wanted everybody to understand kind of all my feelings that came up from that particular project and also from the North Amherst Library request last year. It's the same sort of circumstance where, you know, a lot of merit um, behind what the ultimate aim is, but um, not coming to us at a, at a point where it's a useful proposal. I mean, if we, if we move if we move to the North Amherst Library now, I mean, to me, you know, from last year to this year, you know, now there are plans, there's an architect involved, yep. and there's actually real numbers, there's a structural engineer. So, um, you know, I think, right, so to me, it's progressed, right? So last year, it wasn't much and now all of a sudden that there's you know a clear scope mm -hmm. and right right mm -hmm. and the whole addition that he was talking about being added on the other end of the building that's the one that's being privately funded right right yeah okay yeah right like, like, like Gilbert said and I think you know it became apparent though that whether or not that addition moves forward I mean it's cost effective to roll it into that if we're doing it the work mm -hmm. but um, you know, the library itself, this work needs to be done to the foundation. So at some point, you know, that beam has to be put back in and the walls have to be shored up and... Well, looking at the resource in the verb, I would say it's eligible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I failed to ask, I would like to know what the total estimated cost of the larger project mm -hmm. is. Um, the sort of well, yeah, it's privately funded, so. It's, I thought uh, that the private funding was right now around four hundred thousand. Is that right? All right. Okay. I think that's what I'd heard, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know actually. Sorry. 
So we could consider that, um, you know, a matching fund or another source mm -hmm. of revenue mm -hmm. for this project if we consider this project part of that other project. Right. I mean, R40 would be matching the whatever, 400 or something. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And then the library would be in good shape and they could leave us alone for the next 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> What would we call the uh, the verb in this case? Uh, I would call it rehabilitation. Okay. I would say preserve, right? I'd say preserve. Yeah, yeah preservation. Okay. Really? They're preserving, yeah, they're preserving it from collapsing. <laughs> <laughs> so we were rehabilitating it from a state of uh, a collapse. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Conserve is the one we often use historically as opposed to preserve. Right. Okay, so next uh, in order of magnitude is, uh, I believe it's the um, North Common. Yeah. Which, yeah, I, just, I, mean, you know, Chris, I think Chris said it, I just want to make clear that, you know, the town's also then making an additional request uh, to um, for recreation. So the total request this year for CPA funding for the North Common is 500,000, 250 right. from historic and 250 from recreation. And if the DPW amount gets, goes down from like 1.9 to 1.5 or so, and we have 900,000 and they get five, they're only a little short, so it could actually happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know the, uh, I, I think the bid in the chamber, we're gonna help with some fundraising efforts to kind of get us over the hump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so important to get that bloody thing cleaned up. We've worked on it so long. And then, you know, there, we, we talked at the, in the committee at the time about other additional things later, like if they want to, like if they have to do asphalt and they want to add paving stones later, or I had gotten bids for those uh, animal sculptures that kids could get on and stuff and you know dotting those around and those could be done on individual basis of funding you know private funding and stuff so this would just get the thing redesigned and then we could add the frills afterwards right i think you know the material uh choice is a um is a big cost factor so you know is are all the walkways you know concrete you know are, is the saw um plaza, you know, individual Belgian block pavers, or is it, you know, right. could it just be stamped asphalt? And, um, you know, I mean, th I, you know, those are decisions that would have to be made at some point, but they could have a dramatic impact on cost. But if they had close to the amount, then they could really tweak each of those little, mm -hmm. you know, decisions. Right, right. And maybe, you know, we are applying, I think we've talked about trying to apply for a park grant. The town did apply twice before and was unsuccessful. I think the difficulty is that- um, It's not a park. It's, yeah, and it's, it's a, the, well, park grants will help with um, historic projects, but I think the difficulty is that this is the a town common, <laughs> right? So it's, not a, it's not a piece of property. And so they mm -hmm. funded, for instance, what they call the uh, Cambridge Commons, but that was actually a private donation and it's private, pro you know, it's, pro it's a property. It's not actually a historic common. Mm -hmm. And they funded some other commons, but they're not actually commons the way Amherst is actually, you know, an actual common. So, um, yeah, I find it's a difficult um, project to get funded. You know, there's not a lot of programs that will fund this type of work. That's good to know for evaluation purposes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, all the more reason why they need us. Right, yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, it is disappointing though. We've looked at a few different grant programs and because it's a historic common and it's not a property, you know, there's no deed associate, associated with it. It becomes, you know, almost a lot of these grant programs will say, well, where's the ownership? And then we'll, you know, show them the maps and some, you know, old books about Amherst and they, no one's convinced. <laughs> 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 I think the... Well, um, it's good information to take to the CPA. You know, I was going to say too, one, one thing Gopher didn't, or Chris didn't talk about was that we, we like tried for a while to see if there's a way to phase the project in, like first do the parking lot and then wait on the park or, or vice versa. But because of the grading and like making it all meet and it, it became really difficult to try to do like one piece now and one piece later. So it, Right. That's why we joined him in the first place, really. Right, right. 
So I'm going to, uh, so I think this is eligible. Uh, however, a strict constructionist would look at <laughs> identifying the historic resource and find that the thing that matches it is real property, but we've just said it's not a property. <laughs> <laughs> oh. A historic resource in the town, though. <laughs> yeah. We do have it. Well, I, a, I, I agree. I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm just sort of. And it's a contributing landscape in a uh, historic well, district. Mm -hmm. There you go. All Beautiful. right. Call it Town Hall's front yard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we, uh, per, you know, if, well, we can get to amounts to recommend later on, but just maybe worth noting that uh, if 250000 is granted in uh, historic preservation that would bring historic preservation's contribution to this project to six hundred and ten thousand. Mm -hmm. so. um, okay, so eligible, and then um, slate roofs. No, 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 no. Sorry, town steps. Yeah, and that could be dropped if we take out the south side to two ten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna. Um, I was just looking through my notes. I think Jeremiah had talked about how the town has um, seventy four thousand dollars, kind of as a match. Yeah, for everything, he was hesitant, but at least they could put some towards it. Yeah, that is one of the ones that really feels like it. That and the roofs that you could argue should be town funded, not. Yeah. There should be maintenance. The steps, in, well, I don't know, both of them. The slate roofs are historic materials, and those are historic steps, but heck, they're just steps that need to be taken <laughs> care of. I don't know. I well, my argument was that, you know, what, what about taking care of those steps is costing extra money because they're historic? Like, if they have to be treated extra carefully, if you have to bring in some sort of a skilled craftsman or something like that. Well, they're there taking the blocks away, they're numbering them, they're storing them, they're restoring the handrail the way mm -hmm. it was. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't be done like that if it were done cheaply. You just rip it all out and pour concrete. Right. So, yeah, I mean, there is careful effort being taken to replicate right what what what's existing with the exact same configuration of the granite blocks. Well, I was saying to Jane that you know if you look at a roof and you 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 have to replace a roof, and you can compare the cost of replacing a standard contemporary roof with replacing it with slate, you have a pretty clear difference in what the extra historic component is costing. And then you could kind of apply that to a dollar value. And I was just wondering if there was that way to, to kind of apply that to the, um, mm -hmm. for the town steps to say, well, if these are just regular steps, like Jan said, and you can just rip them out and, you know, what, what is the piece of, of the historic aspect of it that's making it more expensive, that's making it harder for the town to afford? It's the whole Richardsonian Romanesque bag you know you, you've got those massive pieces of stone that are beautifully shaped and dressed right and right no I mean I understand that piece but I'm saying how do you quantify that how do you put a dollar then, amount on then that go back to the but there no yeah go it, back to the budget yeah yeah so the material storage and staging not the permitting I mean permitting I don't think there's a lot of, I mean yeah so I can't imagine there's much money in that into that but I mean, my guess is, you know, a hundred thousand, right? A hundred thousand dollars is just because they're historic, right? I mean, you have to. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I think, I think we need to press these kinds of proposals a little bit for, on their budgets to um, mm -hmm. really figure out what the historic piece is. I would, I would say nine, you know, 90 to a hundred thousand would be, would be okay with considering it. Yeah, that level. Uh, and then I think we also kind of have to consider it um, um, in a sense of urgency against the against the other proposals. Mm -hmm. We may, you know, we may want to limit the dollar figure of our recommendations. And, you know, that either means 
cutting down requests or it means not not recommending requests I think. yeah so we could tentatively say we might give them 90 here but if the roofs are protecting buildings that are leaking or something then that would trump this you know i mean yeah well yeah, we, no, we usually yeah. oh i usually bring a, a rank to the cpa because you know then the cpa all of the cpa has to vote yeah. on it too so yeah. they're gonna have an opinion <laughs> Well, right. we'll rank at the end. We always do that last. Right. I mean, the south steps, you know, are actually really uneven and difficult to navigate, but as a, um, they're, not they're, not, they're not the publicly used steps. So, you know, I know, I think, you know, there's thought that, well, if we're doing the steps, you can just kind of tack on the south steps, but. Um, yeah, but he even admitted that they aren't historic steps. So this is a, the budget that's up there is for both sets of steps. We don't have them split out. Well, the yeah. South steps is 40,000. The second items. The second oh, items. sorry. Thank you. Right. Okay. So 50, 55,000 for the South steps. That's okay. why I was saying 210 or something. Okay. Right. Well, if you take, you know, if you just take the 90 and say the historic part, that's plenty with the amount of money we're looking at, so. I wish we could somehow be really devious and uh, no, I don't <laughs> to think about the civil war tablets in relation to this, because isn't one of the ideas to put the civil war tablets in front of town hall? No, oh, but right not, not here. It was on the other side, on the south side. It was looked at though out here. There was at one point there was a concept design. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I still think that um, having the tablets inside would be better for their for their sake. It may not be as easily viewed. So I still think there's you know a, a you know whole decision making process about how they get displayed. But so just sorry, I didn't mean to muddy the water. Some, um, uh, but I so the bit we're considering now is just the bit in the front of the building, the main steps. Yes. Right. Okay. Just the steps themselves, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they're they're cyclopedian steps, guys. You know, they're they're up there with the Mycenaean tombs as far <laughs> as this country is concerned. Mm. I I don't want to push it because I'm being a bit playful, but the massiveness of all of that is is pretty impressive, and that's what we've got, you know. <laughs> We're not Crete, <laughs> but we've got, we've got, you know, this amazing town hall. And um, I don't really understand the, the economics of why the town isn't fronting up enough money for all of these projects. That's beyond me at this point. But um, if we can vote, if we can recommend rather that we work on the front steps, I think we would be uh, doing the right thing. Well, maybe if we gave a little something towards the historic end, that would push the town to come up with the difference. And if we yeah. give nothing, maybe they won't do anything. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe, I think Jeremiah has about 75, realistically, for the front steps, because the, the budget he gave us was for the, the full entire envelope of town hall. So I think when he said he had a, over 100,000, I mean, that's really, some of that money's, I know he said that there wasn't, it wasn't maybe detailed, but I think some of that was probably expected that at one point the town halls and have new storm windows just so we can you know i mean the amount of energy waste through the windows and i think some of it may have been trying to fix leaks in the roof and you know so i agree that i would you know he could take some of that money but if we're saying okay maybe he has a hundred thousand dollars at most for the steps and we could work you know we could work backwards from there if we i don't know what the budget shows but so it's 210 for the steps themselves yeah. The part we're working with is 210. Yeah. And I think we could take a percentage of that even. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Jan said maybe 100,000 or 90 or something. That might be enough to get mm -hmm. enough movement. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, why don't we? So, that, that's eligible because it's a structure or building and it's a restoration. Um, now we need to wrestle with slate roofs. Yeah. yeah, sorry. I think I just wanted to say one more thing about the uh, town hall steps is just considering it in relation to the North Commons project and how they are kind of linked together. Mm -hmm. and if we're, you know, supporting 
redoing the front of the kind of front yard of town hall then doing the uh, steps kind of corresponds to that and they just did the door right right so which does look nice yeah the door does look nice yeah man the slate roofs are expensive i i have to say it's And so, the 20000 for the town hall, would that have been within that money that Jeremiah City had for town hall? You're saying storm windows and roof? Is that in that money? I mean, it may be. I mean, you know, he said entire, he said envelope, so. Yeah. Um, so maybe he kind of has that somewhere and we're double dipping here. Um, yeah, yeah, good question. I don't know for sure, right? But. The Munson really needs it. I don't. I know the North Amherst School might, but 250. We don't even have 250 yeah. total. I know the slate is looking pretty rough on North Amherst School, but um, yeah. what is? Did he? Did Jeremiah say? Well, uh, I'm imagining he would say that these are of equal urgency, but. Uh, did he did he rank them in a priority of any sort? He didn't rank them, but he did mention the leaking in Munson. Yeah, I mean, my thought would be the North Amherst School. My only hesitation was the the the, the membrane on the back. To me, isn't necessarily historic, and it would be a shame to put put on spend money on a slate roof and then five years from now have to rip up a lot of you know a fair amount of slate to do the membrane. And so, right, that could be a different material. That could be asphalt or something. Um, no, I don't know. I would, I would just, say it, that it falls into preservation. I don't think the membrane has to be historic, but I think no. it preserves the building. Right, but I think the I think it has to be a membrane because I think the slope of the roof isn't steep enough so you can't use shingles uh -huh. so yeah. you have to use a certain you know different material yeah. it's not you know it's just too shallow of a pitch but, but that, you know, i don't know I, yeah I, I just north hammer school that's such a big um estimate i'd love to have you know another estimate or two and have well, you know, is there is there an urgency to it i mean do we do we know the extent to which it could wait another year? Well, something's going to have to because we don't have enough money. So, right. I, I would, I mean, my, my thought is to uh, recommend Munson Library. Um, yeah, the town mm -hmm. hall could fold into the town hall budget, wait on North, North Hammer School, and just do the Munson. Yeah. And it should be the library building. It's not just the library. It's a building that houses other stuff too. Right. Something yeah. that's confusing. Um, it, was this accompanied by uh, uh, a detailed mm -hmm. budget, or is this the only? Uh, um, yeah, there was. Sorry, there's, was esti okay. there's estimates attached. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. doo -doo -doo. Um, I can get that out here. So for, uh, they're done individually by building. So here's okay. the Munson Library. Um, there are some slates that need replacing. It sounds like, right, they're gonna do valleys and ridge, right? They're gonna basically kind of, you know, yeah, he was saying that the flashing was in bad shape and mm -hmm. um, I'm cutter. Standard straights, reflash the chimney, install copper on all the ridge caps. One section of snow guard, heavy duty copper gutter at the back eave of roof. And then, you know, I mean, 
I get it. A, a heavy duty copper gutter can serve the job better, but is there a different material if it's in the back of the building? It's not visible as much to it, you know? Yeah, that was one thing that I thought. I mean, you, walk, you do walk around the back, but. Snow guards can be installed, but are not necessary. He doesn't have that in the, in the budget. And he's using copper instead of slate caps to save money. Right. Well, um, yeah, does that, I mean, we could move on to uh, more, you know, this kind of matrix that Robin put together for um, the Jones Library is still on our list. Do we want to consider that separately or consider it's part of this? Well, we have to consider it together, don't we? Because we're going to have to, or do we rank these and then that one's not ranked within our priorities? Because well, the, the Jones Library is only different because last year we, so if, if we're talking about cash out of CPA funds this year versus um, recommending Jones for bonding, oh, right. that has the impact on the dollar amount. So we wouldn't put it even into the total for this year. We just understand we'd be recommending, like I said, if it was bonded over 10 years, $100,000 of historic preservation funds for 10 years of debt service. But I think, no, I, I, but to me, it's interesting. I, I thought it was um, interesting the way Anthony categorized it as an old request. I mean, to me, it's, 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 a, it, it's, a, it's a new request this year. And I think we need to be, consider it that way. I don't, I don't because, um, you know, the request changed a little bit. It's, it's just like the North Amherst Library coming back, or if we ask Goodwin or Mill River to come back next year. But we had say, asked, we had, in the CPA, we'd specifically decided not to vote on the proposal and asked them to bring back a new proposal. I, I don't think we, I don't even know that we anticipated that we'd be reviewing it at the same time as the other proposals. So it's a little bit separate. I mean, it was really a request of the committee to revise their proposal so that we could consider it. Are you talking about the library? Yeah. Okay. It wasn't, it wasn't on the part of the applicant. It was a request of the CPA committee. But to me, I don't consider it an old request. I mean, it's a current request this year, I guess, is all. Okay. So as I look at the, the one, two, three, four, five, six proposals we've talked about, excluding the Jones Library and the rough amounts that we've said. So this. We're at about 165,000. Uh, I get 445. What about the uh, North Island? Hmm? Well, we, but I, I'm just putting down the amounts that we talked about actually giving them. What did we talk about for the North Common? I have 250 for that. I have that, and then I have um, 40 for the library, yeah. um, 12 for the Goodwin. Yeah. Oh, wait, 165. I guess I forgot to add the 150. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. I did something wrong here. Yeah, 12, 40, 250, 100, or 90 maybe for the steps, and then 53, right? Yeah. Okay. I've, yeah, I've got 445 for that. Yeah, I get 445. Would okay. you recommend more for Goodwin? Like, you know, like Jane said a range maybe, like 15 to 18 or 12 to 18? Yeah. I thought they were asking 10 and we put it up to 12. No, no there was 12. Oh, okay. So let's see. You said the total project cost was about twenty-four to twenty-five thousand, and so I was figuring if you added a contingency on it, could add you know five to six thousand, four to six thousand on. Okay. So let's say right. fifteen for a round number. 
that's like four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which you know, against how much was it? Against one ten point one. <laughs> yep. Yeah, one point one three. Yeah. I think that's I think that's fine though. Okay. You know, I, I think there's you know a few recreation. Um, there's some housing. Um, there's not there's not a big conservation ask this year in terms of property acquisition. So. Um, so the the larger overall fund is going to have more to lean towards this direction this year. I mean, the housing trust is putting in. There's like you know there's probably there's um, I think 1.2 million and just 1.3 million in just housing requests. Yeah. Um, so. Okay. So, could we frame this as uh, so we can go back and talk more specifically about these proposals if we want to? I notice it's about ten minutes to nine. Uh, but could we like frame a memo or a recommendation that um, explains um, in what ways we find these projects eligible? And then a a recommended funding amount for them, and then a a ranking of them, um, and then how much more detail do we do we need at this point? I think you know if the commission wants to do. A priority order. I think that would probably be it. Um, but there hasn't been. Um, and it looks like you have the North Amherst Library and Goodwin reversed. But uh, uh, happening. do we? Yeah. But what about the Jones Library? I, I guess I'm confused. What's happening with the Jones? That is so. Well, we're treating it separate, right? Oh, I mean, how we I, we we. Yeah, I'd say recommend it, but uh, yeah, I mean, all we can do is be supportive, and then they're going to have to find the money, right? I mean, our recommendation there can include uh, a bond authorization, right? Well, that's what that was what we did last year. We yeah. recommended it at they asked for a million and a half, and we recommended it at a million for specific items because there was no detail in the. Mm -hmm. So, but, but what it, happened to that then? Did it go through? No. No, that was the the problem oh. of the CPA was that there were uh, there were two or three members who were concerned about it falling under um, a create creation definition of um, that's excluded from the the, uh, the CPA. Um, so and if that they, if they've rewritten it and it makes sense and it's all right, then it's probably pretty likely that the bond authorization will be approved then. Yeah, I think the, uh, the CPA was comfortable with the bond idea um, and they were certainly seemed much more comfortable with the idea of reviewing it once there was a specific line item budget. There were just a bunch of different, uh, bunch of different people in different ways they were, that, that the project made them uneasy. One was the detail, one was the definition of historic preservation and um, this this reiteration of it was to clarify those issues. So I would recommend um, I would recommend it at, at the million dollars. We're basically reiterating our recommendation from the last cycle, which is a million dollars. Now we don't have to tell them what the money goes towards because they've been given us a mm -hmm. definitive line item budget. Mm -hmm. um, bonded over, we, we can just say bonded or bonded over 10 years or bonded over five years. Or, and what about if we do that, but we also just sort of leave it with a line between and then do our rankings of the other five or six, the one would be at the bottom, um, and not put it in our rankings since it's, it's not really out of the pot of money that we're supposed to be creating a ranking for. That makes sense. I think, yeah, I yeah, I can go along with that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, shall we? Um, I mean, we've got just a few yeah. of here. Can we just sort of do a shout out of our number one? 
Before we before we do a shout out, I just have a quick question, Jane. You made the point that um, the two hundred and fifty thousand for the North Common <clears throat> brings a lot of money into a lot of historic preservation money into that project. Is there any reason that you feel we should reduce that amount, given how much historic preservation money is already in the pot there? I I didn't know if that was. Yeah. Well, you know, I have a. I do have this sort of little niggling thing from um, the presentation tonight, and that is that we saw two plans at presumably two different uh, cost points, mm -hmm. and we don't know what the second cost point is for the mm -hmm. town design. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I don't think. I mean, frankly, I. I'm. I'm really not sure that a. Cost, uh, cost estimate that's two years old is really going to hold up, uh, even mm -hmm. if they say it's really going to go down. Um, but I'm not sure exactly what we're endorsing. Um, I don't think, you know, I, th I, think, I think they could use all of the 250, no matter what happens. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been fuzzy from the beginning. Don't you remember on the committee, they kept saying, you know, we're just going to let them give us the perfect plan and they claim they've told them our budget, but then people at those public meetings were saying, this looks like a $2 million plan. And they, they were saying, no, no, we've got 900,000, it'll be fine. And then it came back at 1.9, you know, and they haven't been open about the budget end of it all the way along. And they're kind of doing that again. They're obscuring it by saying, here's what we got from the designers, but now DPW's, you know, gotten a cheaper one. Well, we don't know how much cheaper, but you know, I mean, come on, you're giving us a proposal. Give us some numbers. Did I say been kind of a style that got all the way. Did if they I think Gilbert's right that, like that um, I mean, I don't think it'll get much lower than 1.5. I mean, I just think the cost of materials, you know, if we do nice pavers, nice, you know, we do, we have decorative lights, we do, you know, Benches are a few thousand each. We do a lot of benches, the table. I mean, I. Yeah, they're saving on a few trees and, you know, maybe they won't have quite the same number of walls, but the grading and everything is going to require a certain amount of that construction, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so, we, we yeah. could, um, I mean, if they think they're going to bring it down by 25%, we could bring 250 down by 25%. I don't know. That seems a little. They're still going to need it, though, even if they get it to one point. Yeah, they will. Yeah, they will. So I don't, I guess I don't really see a reason. Okay. Yeah. Ben, can would, you the off commons? Would the, um, the slate roof, we're only saying for, um, for the Munson Library, right? So that's the, and then with the North Common, I think what a previous um, commission recommended, you know, previously was that the amount for North Common would be whatever is um, the same amount for recreation. So, for instance, you know they're asking two fifty from recreation, and if recreation only recommends two twenty, then there's always you know some um, parity between the two. So we you know the it could be that you know we recommend this with what as long as the you know mm -hmm. recommended. Yeah. yeah, yeah, to be matched by LSOC or whatever you call them. Right. Yeah. yeah. Not to exceed the LS, uh, not to exceed the, the recreation uh, allocation. Okay. Recommend allocation. Yeah. Yeah. Ben, it's just one common, the North Commons. Can you just take that S off? Thanks. I, I don't even like calling it the North Common because it's really the, you know, to but me, it I, is the North Common. Yeah. The North end oh, of I, the I, Common. The, the, the North Common is where it is down the road from me. <laughs> no, that's the Cushman Common or something, isn't it? It has a different name. No, it's the North Village Common. North Village. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe under Goodwin, you should under the notes you should say that we're adding. Um, uh, what are, what are we calling the addition? Contingency. Yeah, Contingency. I'd say like material yeah. price increase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So now all we need is the ranking. So 
uh, I'm going to shout out. Okay. Uh, church number one. I agree. Yeah. Yes, me too. Ooh, okay. Yep, I agree. Okay. Um, the North Library too. To fix oh, that, yeah. or the or the months of North Common. The, yeah, I'd say North Common. I think I'd like that because because okay. we're you know committed to it. I'd it would be interesting to know you know how long they have to bank all this money before they actually use it. Yeah. Uh, is that a decision too? Two. Hedy and Robin, you okay with that? Mm, yep. Yep. Okay. And then the North Amherst Library. I can agree with that. Okay, and then Monson. Mm. Four. And then no river doesn't. So down steps is five. No yeah. river doesn't count. And then library, the Jones Library isn't on our ranking. Yeah, um, I think we should include Mill, the Mill River project in our in our in recommendation. Note. Yeah, with a no do, a reason why we think it's not eligible. Yeah, go back. Na was correct, but then in the yeah. notes we'll explain why. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um. So. We want, yeah, not eligible, and then we're going to ask for a better proposal, right? Um, well, we were going to refer to recreation. Oh, that's right. Refer yeah, to right. Mm -hmm. I mean, Meg, I think Meg reached out to staff, it may have been just like a week or two weeks before the CPA proposals were due, asking about a few things, but it wasn't clear that she was asking because it was um, for a CPA proposal. So that's good, Ben. You know, sometimes it's hard to vet a project or work with it before the application is actually received. Right, right. Is, well, it's a, yeah, it's a short uh, process for some reason. My, so I have this terrible charger on my iPad that. I think uh, you've got charges this less than you just. I just want to save this before. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just uh, send this to the CPA committee. <laughs> that That's essentially our memo right there. Ben has written since we spoke. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> so if you, uh, uh, if you want to add any text, I'm happy to, <laughs> happy to work on that with you. <laughs> a little preliminary, a little goodbye at the bottom and we got it. Yeah, I mean, we, exactly. could, we could just throw the letter CPA on there somewhere and <laughs> <laughs> we're okay. Are there any notes for the North Amherst Library? Just, um, oh. You know, it's uh, all I have is a it's preservation for the verb and. I think we said, you know, I think we said that it's nice that the um, other project could be considered part of a match. You know, and they're kind yeah. of folded into. Yeah, yeah I, th I think in each of these cases, in our sort of you know quote unquote justification, where there is um, where there are other resources that are being. Um, brought yeah. into play we should we should yeah ben maybe something like serves to match um yeah. new, new really. construction and i i think it's okay to note where there is no proposed alternate uh, uh, additional resource like for example the slate roofs yeah and then for the south steps like you know At build this time. existing town funds yeah just put not the south steps at this time so that we don't look like real creeps. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we are. <laughs> no, I, mean, I, I do think though the, um, you know, in the last few years, CPA has become really competitive. Yeah. And so, you know, with all the categories, there's been a lot more requests. I think it's become, um, you know, difficult to, to recommend and, and narrow down the proposals. I think that's actually- Oh, a, God, it's so different than like four or five years ago. Yeah. We've got maybe 25,000 max. Back right. Then. This is really a lot, yeah. No, uh, I, I, yeah. So if we're good with uh, our CPA discussion for now, um, I suggest that we have an update on the writer's walk and then, um, uh, see if anybody wants to adjourn. Yeah. Um, so, 
the only thing about the writer's walk, uh, we, Hetty and I did it house by house, footstep by footstep, and it works really well. Um, so we're ready with the change to add the words West Cemetery and to fix the link, and we're ready to order the signs. So that can go out next week or this week, whatever. But the website is out of date. It hasn't been updated. So um, I had told Seth that we were okay now. We're finalized with the text, but um, I think either Ben or Nate, or if you want me to, but somebody should talk to um, yeah, John Olson, is it? Not, yeah, John but Olson um, about, you know, tactfully about changing the bolt with changing the Lord Jeff to Boltwood. Um, I, I, I listed a couple of things to you, Ben. I can't remember what they are now, but there's a few other things. And then Hetty was concerned about the um, entry for Helen Hunt Jackson, that it just says that she wrote her books and did her work for the sake of Native American rights and does not list the tribes. But we don't have room on the sign to list the seven tribes plus that she specifically was working on. So I think it should be on the website, um, you know, like more information past the little tiny blurb would be on the website. Um, and that's going to take a little bit of research, but also um, asking him to put that on because that's not in their text at all. Um, so I asked Teddy to, to maybe do a, a draft text that we could offer to him so we wouldn't be asking him to do the work. We'd just be asking him to upload it. But sooner or later, we're going to have to ask him to either give us most of that website or we're going to have to rework it or something because we can't keep going back to this guy and ask him to make every little tweak. Right. So, yeah. So, you know, the, the web link is amherstma.gov backslash writers walk. And that just redirects you to amhersthistoric.org. But right. that web link can be put anywhere. So, you know, I've spoken with IT and they, right, they mentioned um, working with him to either update the website or, you know, they said it sounds like there could, I don't know if there's a way that we could migrate that page onto our domain. So, I would like it if, we, if he would give us permission to take most of it because right. he has a lot of photos and a lot of information on there that I didn't, you know, spend the time researching that would be useful. Right. Uh, some of it needs vetting still, but like the photos and stuff are great. I, I don't know that he has permission from on a lot of them, you know, to use. So it'd have to be checked. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right. So at least the web link is good and we can always... To me, to me, it's like, you know, we can always refine where it goes. So if, you know, if he's hopefully amenable to having the, his, because, um, you know, he hosts other, um, you know, listening tours on, on that website. On that so. website, yeah. But before we get the signs up, I'd like him to at least fix a couple of really crucial things, like the Lord Jeff is no longer that. And that sort yeah. of thing. Oh, and the numbers. The numbers have to be changed because his map numbers oh, are different. Right, right. Yeah, it's a big he, doesn't, one. he doesn't have the Dickinson house and he has, um, it's like number two to go out yeah. to Robert Francis way up in, you know, North Amherst. So it, we just, he'd have to use our map and numbers. So do you want to talk to him, Ben? Um, email? Um, yeah, maybe just with an introduction from you or Nate. Sure. Yeah, I can do that. I'll be like, hey, John, here's Ben. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. I'll, I'll, I, I, I can email him. Okay. Can we do that this week so we know that he has plenty of time? We're not saying to him, we need this tomorrow. The signs are going in. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. I know tomorrow. Okay, great. Because yeah, I talked to our IT people and they had some ideas. So I think, you know, the easier thing to do is have that his, the web, his website updated, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, worst case scenario is we try to migrate the data or you know recreate the web his web page but um, and then can you just cc me on it and say that if he wants to have you know wants to i'll be happy to work with him on the details sure yeah okay i just think it's better if you guys sort of take over the official communication i'm happy to you know help him but i don't feel like i don't know it just doesn't feel like it should be me from the town no that's great that's fine yeah okay I agree. Hey, well, I'm thanks. trying not to take over here. You notice? 
<laughs> Thanks, Jan and Hetty, for uh, checking all that out and seeing how it's fun. That's great. Yeah, yeah. It was great. I, it's yeah. a really it, it represents a very uh, important body of work, um, and and I think Jan has been amazing in uh, oh, condensing Laura. everything. Amazing and persistent. Yeah. <laughs> I do have a bracelet that says, nevertheless, she persisted. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I realize that we can't adjourn without um, having a public comment, inviting public comment. Oh, God, so, has anybody been waiting through all this? I, I will invite public People. comment now. Yeah, so any member of the public, you can um, click raise hand to um, make a comment. Doesn't look like they're raising their hand. Oh, I'm not seeing anything. Are you, Ben? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. All right. Can I just ask, under an unanticipated items, um, some sometime when we have time on an agenda, Hetty had this great idea that um, we start thinking about, um, in our desire to save barns, maybe doing barn tours the way that the Historical Society does house tours to raise interest and get people motivated to save their barns or work on them or something. Can we talk about that sometime in a, on an agenda? Yeah, yeah, that actually is, that is interesting because um, Shannon from PDPC had said that a number of owners are actually really excited by them and they have, you know, old photographs or history of the barn or property. So um, yeah, it'd be a nice thing to add. And maybe we could ask her in her notes to tell us who some of those are to get going. Mm -hmm. It'd be great. That would be so much fun. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. No. Do you remember a few years ago there was a lighting, a barn lighting project up in Oh yeah, I remember that. Yep. Amherst. Yeah, that was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Well anyway, could we put that on agenda, Ben? Yep, yeah, I just wrote it down here. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks everyone today. for uh, uh slogging through all of this. It was uh, really productive. So thanks so much. And now we get to meet the CPA. Uh, timeline. Yeah, do we want to, before we okay, adjourn, I mentioned though is um, you know the MHC survey and planning grant. You know Ben and looked into it. You know we've applied it previously, and um, you know they first ask for a preliminary letter, and then if you're accepted, you submit a full application. But the the preliminary letter is due, I think in mid December. Right, Ben. Um, I forget the timeline, but. Like it November, yeah. You know, something that we want, we want to consider. Yeah, I, I think we can't consider it tonight. We'll, we'll right. To I was thinking for the next meeting, it could be. I think we have time, but I think just yeah. to, you know. Let's put it way. Let's put it up higher on on the agenda for next time. So. We, yeah. And when is our next meeting? Um. I yeah, do. We have it scheduled. Is it we have okay. a is it third Wednesday of November? So Ben Hilda just emailed. She might want to speak. She can't raise her hand. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Sorry about that, Hilda. If you if you want to make make a comment, I didn't realize. You couldn't no, make. I didn't. I just wanted to tell you that when when that screen filled the whole thing, there was no way I could find. If it, it might happen to somebody else that they want to talk and. Oh, okay. and and the little icons aren't accessible. Huh. That's good to know. Just in yeah. case it comes up again, I thought you might want to know that. Okay. Thank you. Well, actually, the pre-application letter for um, the survey and planning grant are, is due November 16th. Um, hmm. Maybe we should okay. meet on like the 11th or 10th or something then. Um, I think we're going to have to do that maybe by poll just to see, I mean, we've got, all right, we've got a quorum here right now. Uh, so if somebody wants to propose a date, we can consider that date. Otherwise, we'll have to do some kind of poll, I think. You mean a meeting? Would it be the 11th? 11th is a holiday, just FYI. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Veterans Day. Well, we've been meeting on Wednesdays, but today's not Wednesday. Today's Monday. Okay. So what about the night? We've been 
Yeah, we've been meeting on Mondays. Um, so not November 16th? That's the deadline. Oh, oh dear. Um, Can't do Thursdays because that's CPA. How about Monday the um, 9th? So that's in two weeks? I can do that at 6.30. Yes. Or possibly Me in the too. Me too. Victim for glutton for punishment. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing I like all you people. Yeah. I know. Except for Nate, of course, but that's a given. So what was that? Nothing. <laughs> I was reading the um the, the survey and planning grant requires a 50-50 match. Sorry, so I was just looking over our pre our CPA balances. So the commission has um $25,000 for historic, um, for um, a preservation plan update. We, there's 50, um, there's money for headstone work. Uh, and then there's $25,000 for historic resource inventory. So, you know, my thought is for the survey and planning grant, you know, we could ask for either money to update uh, the preservation plan to do historic resource inventory work or to do something with cemeteries and restoration. So those, because we already have money appropriated, we have the 50-50 match already in hand. So that way, you know, those three topics um, would work. Because, you know, if we, if we propose something, we have to have a 50% project match, which, you know, we may not have. Um, for I would say historic resource inventory. I can't think anymore. I'm losing track of what you're talking about because I'm so tired of all this. Yeah. Sure. So I, really I can send it in a summary email. Yes, please. Yes, and just make us yes. list the things that are eligible and then we can respond with our sense of priorities. But I really think we have to stop now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. Do we it's agree on the 9th? Do we I agree on the 9th? Yeah. yeah, we did. But we, we are tired. <laughs> okay, can I? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Yes. I motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All right. I think not debatable. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, great. Okay. Love you all. Have a good evening. In two weeks. <laughs> so much fun with you, Tony. Maybe go tell your dog your ideas. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody.